Well, uh, UFC Fight Night Sao Paulo, Lewis versus Almeida just took place. I'm going to be going through the entire card, starting with the first prelim, ending with the main event, giving my reaction and breakdown of every single fight on the card. Uh, it was a very average card. It didn't end on a good note. Obviously, you guys know what happened. But we're going to start off with the prelims, though. So, the first fight on the card was Mark Jacasey versus Ordo Fernandez, or whatever his name is. I don't know his first name. Fernandez. Uh, Jacasey won a split decision. I don't know why it was a split decision. I thought it was pretty clear win for Jacasey. I thought 30-27. Um, the one judge did give it that for him. Uh, he basically just used the grappling and got control time for 15 minutes. Not the most action-packed fight, but a win nonetheless for Mark Jacasey. Um, the next fight on the card was Eduardo Moura versus Montserrat Ruiz. Um, I picked Moura to win. I also picked Jacasey to win, by the way. But I picked Moura to win dominantly. She was absolutely massive in this fight. She massive favourite. Massive advantage in the size, the grappling, all of that. That's why I picked her to win. She got a TKO in the second round. It was dominant the whole way through. Um, one of many dominant grappling performances on this card, let's just say. Um, but she got an impressive second round KO. Missed weight, though, so she's got to, got to get that under control. Can't be missing weight. Um, but, yeah, Ruiz was tiny. Apparently, I heard on the broadcast, she said she has to gain weight to, to be a 115. She's, like, five foot tall. So... Good job from Eduardo Mora. you got to get your weight under control, but if she can do that, she could probably dominate a lot of people at straw weight. We move on. Up the card, Denise Gomez versus Angela Hill. Uh, this is a fight that I did get wrong. I thought Denise Gomez was going to blitz and just catch Angela Hill early in the fight and put her away with like a bit of an early stoppage, but she didn't. Look, she did have moments in the first two rounds. She had moments of striking success. She had moments where she blitzed Angela Hill and kind of stung her a little bit, but as was the reason why people were picking Hill, um, and why I did consider picking her was that obviously you got that veteran experience, um, and she just does enough to win in a lot of scenarios. She got, uh, I was 30-27 and then 2-29-28, so two of the judges I assume gave Gomez like the first round, I believe, would have it would have been, um, but in the third, I thought it could have been 1-1, which it was on two scorecards. And in the third, Angela Hill just used the takedowns, got the grappling going, um, and did enough to win. Impressively from her, though, turning back the young prospect. But Gomez actually looked pretty solid, and she had a lot of good moments in this fight. So at 23 years of age, she'll definitely be back. She'll, um, she'll be back. I reckon she'll be a top 15 fighter in the next couple of years anyway. But good performance from Angela Hill. The next fight on the card was Vitor Petrina versus Modestus Bukowskis. This was one of the best, per, uh, one of the best performances, one of the best moments of the card. Vitor Petrina pretty much dominated Bukowskis in the first round with some powerful takedowns, and then in the second round, just absolutely flattered, flattered him with a left hook, um, put him down, not quite flatlined, but like uh, the referee stepped in straight away because. Bukowskis was wobbling all over the place. Petrino's just got power for days. That That's just what it is. Um, it's a really impressive stuff from him. I'd like to see him fight like a guy either just outside the rankings. I wouldn't mind like an Eon Kutalaba fight next. I think that'd be good because this guy does look really good. A lot of people thought he was going to get fraud checked by Bukowskis, but he's really explosive and he can beat a lot of guys. Um, he can beat a lot of guys at light heavyweight. But we move on up the card. Renat Fokretinov versus Ezelay Deleski dos Santos. This one, pretty interesting. This was a, ended up being a draw. Um, Renat was a massive favorite going in. A lot of people were like sleeping on the veteran experience of Dos Santos. I did think Renat was going to win. I thought he was going to dominate him, but I wouldn't have been surprised at all if Dos Santos had just won um, by like beating him on the feet, and that's kind of what he did. Obviously, the first two rounds, first round Renat won clearly. Um, not quite a 10-8, but pretty close. He rocked him badly early on and then just held him down for the rest of the round, and the second round was pretty close. One judge actually gave it to Dos Santos, which was kind of surprising in my books, um, but... Regardless, third round, um, DeSantos is winning clearly. Renat's striking was just so weird and ugly to look at. Um, did not like it at all. He throws overhands really weirdly. His defense is really questionable. So he's definitely not the kind of beast that people made him out to be. Not the ma the major problem, I don't think. A lot of guys are welterweight beat him. Um, but regardless... Uh, in the third round, DeSantos caught him with a body kick and kind of folded him. I thought it was going to be done. I was like, oh, fuck's sake. But then Renat um, kind of fought back, ended up just getting beaten up to the rest of the uh, to the horn. Um, 
and then ended up losing, or not losing, so ended up being a draw, 29, so 28-28 on two scorecards. So Renat lost pretty much all of his hype with that uh, performance. Dos Santos still sticking around at his older age. Um, really good performance from him. He definitely doesn't lose anything here, but Renat definitely does. But we move up the card to the main card, technically, because um, one of the fights got cancelled. It's Elvis Brenner versus Kainan Krzyzewski. Um... I picked Elvis Bennett to win. I was looking forward to seeing uh, him fight, and he did really well. He flatlined KO'd Conan Krzyzewski with a left hand in the first round four minutes in. This was a really impressive performance. Um, if you watched the fight, he it was pretty even. Uh, they weren't doing a hell of a lot. Um, obviously, this fight was at a catch weight too, so I was expecting maybe Conan to have a bit of success with the grappling because he'd probably be a bit stronger because he didn't have to cut all the weight. But... Brenner looked great, um, not a lot of grappling exchanges, he was kind of doing well on the feet with some leg kicks and stuff, and then he stepped in to like a kind of overhand right into a left hand that landed like just behind the ear, um, and it just completely flatlined uh, Kanan Krzyzewski. So really good performance from Elvis Brenner, definitely should get a performance of the night bonus. Um, but yeah, really good stuff from him. I want to see him fight a ranked opponent next. I like the idea of like a Doba, a Moicano, a Jalen Turner. Even though I think Turner and Moicano are going to fight, I say what I wouldn't mind is, because I assume Moicano doesn't train with Brenner because he trains at ATT. So I say what you do, you do Turner versus uh, Doba. We know we know why that needs to happen. <laughs> uh, just for the just for the racial purposes, just to test if Doba's... Um, Still got it, you know. Uh, and then I think you do Moicano versus Brenner. I wouldn't mind Brenner versus uh, Grant Dawson as well. Is another one I wouldn't mind. But I think either one fight really close to the rankings or ranked opponent, honestly, is what I believe you give him. Um, maybe give him the loser of Grant Dawson. No, give, sorry, give him the loser of Bobby Green versus Dan Hook as a fight I wouldn't mind to see. But really impressive performance. Definitely the highlight of the card for Elvis Brenner. We move on. Up the card, Kyo Borelli versus Abus Magomedov. He took a shit on the back of a bus. Um, yeah, so the first round, pretty close. I would have given it to um, Abus Magomedov just slightly because Kyo really didn't throw a whole lot. But um, then in the second and third, Kyo just began to find his range. Uh, he was landing really good shots. He um, And Abus was tiring as well. I did kind of... like. I was wondering, I didn't know if that Sean Strickland fight was a one-off in terms of the lack of cardio for Abbas Magomedov. Turns out, it wasn't. That was not a one-off. Turns out he's just got terrible cardio. Only German that doesn't have gas, if you know what I'm saying. Um, bro was gassing harder than Ariel Helwani's grandpa. Uh, um, that's going to get me fucking demonetized. Um... But, regardless, um, Kyra Borrelio dominated uh, Abbas in the second and third round. Almost had a finish in the third round. I would have liked to see him keep it on the feet, go for the finish a little bit more. Unfortunately, he didn't. Um, but, regardless, good stuff from um, Kyra Borrelio. Dumb call-out. He called out Drickus C. That's just a waste of a call-out. Look, 100% deserves a ranked opponent. Does he deserve a fucking top three opponent? No. So, he wasted a call-out. He should have called out, like, Jack Hermanson. I say you do that. Or you do, like, loser of um, Allen versus Craig, even though they're probably going to give that to Pfeiffer. Or something like that. Even, like, the winner of that. Or, like, do the loser of uh, Delidzi versus Amavov, because they're fighting in a couple months for UFC China. Um... So yeah, do that. Good stuff from Brelo. He looked, pay he was patient, didn't get hit a whole lot, but I would have liked to see him go for the finish a little bit more later on. Good win from Kyle Brelo. We move on to the fat heavyweights, Dante Almeida and Rodrigo Nascimento. Um, this was a fight that I predicted uh, Nascimento to win. I thought he was going to just get a boring decision, maybe sub him, I don't know. Got a boring, uh, got a decision. Third third round was really boring, but the first and second were actually kind of fun. There were moments where he was piecing Maze up, um, and it was actually getting kind of interesting. So, good stuff from Nascimento, I guess. It's fat heavyweights. They're unranked. What do you expect? It's like no one had high expectations going into this fight. The anticipated rematch said fucking no one. Um, but, yeah, really good win from... Um, uh, from... What's his name? Uh, Hajerio Nascimento. Um... Good stuff from him. I'd say, yeah, you give him a ranked opponent next. He's, he was kind of, I think he was ranked number 15, and then they moved uh, Martin Bidet into that spot. But yeah, he can get like, I don't know, give, give him like Tybura or some bullshit like that. He's probably already fought him. But he can fight Martin Tabura or he can fight Romanov or some bullshit like that. Um, 
We move on, though, up the card to the co-main event. Nicholas Dalby versus Gabriel Bonfim. This was crazy. This was also one of the highlights of the card. Um, Nicholas Dalby got completely dominated in the first round, was getting dominated in the second, and then comes back and TKOs Gabriel Bonfim late in the second round with pressure, with knees, just drops him, and then beats him up to a finish. Absolutely crazy to see. Gabriel Bonfim looked amazing. He was getting really clean takedowns. He was flowing to positions, he was controlling Delby at will, and I was like, this is a really good performance to run through Delby. Even though he was a massive favourite, I was like, he's just smoking Delby right now, this is really impressive, because Delby's tough, right? And then, they get back up in some point in the second round, and Delby just starts fucking walking forward, just r almost running forward at him, and just keeps punching him in the face, gets him in like a sort of tie clinch, throws some knees to his face, and Bonfim's just like, what the hell is this? can't, he's trying to throw back and be like a technical counterfighter, but he just can't, Delby's just in his face pressuring him, so, and just TKO's him, gets him with a body shot, folds him, and then just TKO's him late in the second, so really impressive win from Nicholas Delby, I say he, deser I say he deserves a ranked opponent next, I say you do like Kevin Holland maybe, um, or something like that, maybe Michael Chiesa, you could honestly do Renat if you wanted to do that, that would be an easy fight to book, um, but I say Neil Magny maybe, I say you give him a ranked opponent, because Dalby, right, he's 38, but he actually looks pretty solid, like he just TKO'd and kind of fraud checked one of the biggest prospects in the welterweight division, who I had in my prospects video, if you want to go check that out, um, a PowerPoint video that I did a couple of weeks ago, um, but yeah, that's what I did, and I thought he was going to be a major problem, and he was running through him in this fight, and then just gets stopped, and just can't deal with pressure, he's a one-round fighter, um, and kind of got fraud-checked, just like Gabriel Bon, just like Ishmael Bonfim did against Buenas Saint Denis, so, crazy stuff, um, after this, I honestly might have been more confident in Vince Pichel to beat uh, Ishmael Bonfim, but regardless... That was that fight. Crazy stuff. We move on to the main event. It's Derek Lewis versus Jelton Almeida. This fight was painful to watch. This was like Sanhagen versus Font all over again, but even honestly more frustrating. Um, because at least Sanhagen did his like tricep, and there was a few moments, but nah, J Jelton Almeida just fucking took him down, sat on him, um, and Lewis stood up at moments, then he took him down again. Like, it was 50-44, 50-44, 50-45. Every round could have probably, like... I know you can't really give 10 eights if they don't land punches, but Jelton Almeida had, like, 20 minutes of control time. It was stupid. Um, there was a moment of excitement when he fell off the top and then ended up on bottom, and Lewis was sitting on him, kind of just punching him in the face. So that was fun to watch. Um, but... Ultimately, this was awful. Jelton Almeida, this is not a stock-raising performance. He was meant to run through Derek Lewis and sub him in the first round, and it was going to be expected, and he wasn't even going to get that much praise from doing that. But instead, he comes out here, takes the fight 25 minutes, just makes everyone at home want to fucking kill themselves, um, and it was a terrible fight to watch. Look, is he good? Is his grappling great? Does he have good takedown entries? Does he have good control, jiu-jitsu, all of that? Yeah, but we kind of knew that already, but he couldn't finish Derek Lewis, um, and now Jelton is looking to be one of those guys that I don't think the UFC is going to get behind all that much. Like, they gave him two, this is his second main event in a row, um, they main evented him in an arena against Rosenstrike 2. That was the least he got him done in the first round. But now I don't think he's going to be a guy that the UFC is going to be overly keen to get behind and try and put in these big main event spots. Like, I don't see... He called out Cyril Garn. I just don't see him doing that because I think the UFC knows he probably just takes down and beats Cyril Garn. Um, and it would be boring and it just wouldn't be fun at all. At least Cyril Garn, even though he's kind of irritating with how he, like states that, I am not going to fight below the me in the ranking, I, you know, I fight for the title, um, but at least, like, Garn's fun to watch, like, at least Garn, like, puts beatings on people, but, Jelton Almeida, not an impressive performance, um, I say you do, like, Volkov, you do Blades, maybe, if you want to rebook that, test the grappling properly, because Lewis did stuff a couple takedowns, you know, so, I guess, solid performance from Almeida, it is what it is, Definitely a stock decreasing performance in my eyes, but whatever. Um, that's the card done, guys. I went, uh, I think, 7, 2, and 1 on picks. So I got Jacasey right. I got Mora right. I got Gomez wrong. I got Petrino right. I got Renat. 
Oh, uh, draw. I got Brenner right. I got Kyo right. Got Rodrigo right. I got Bonfim wrong, and I got Almeida right. So that's the video, guys. I'll see you in the next one, which will probably be the 295 predictions or something else. But peace out.